Good morning to everyone. My name is Rodolfo Morales. I am from Monterrey, Mexico. And today we are talking about ACL anatomy, what's new. So uh, this is my city. It's in the north of Mexico. It's in red in the map. Uh, this image are from my city in the north of Mexico. And uh, this another image are from my, or my laboratory of biomechanics in my school of medicine. We have an arthroscopic ex station to do some experiments and a machine for the biomechanical studies. So since 2013, there is about 217 articles about ACL anatomy. And in the last 10 years, almost uh, 50,000 articles about different ACL topics. So there is a lot of publications in the ACL anatomy and ACL morphology. Uh, there is a wide spectrum of studies that seeks to define the anatomical aspects of the ACL. The principal topic of the research are the anatomical variants of the ACL, the number of bundles, the difference in the ACL morphology according to specific populations, and the shape and location of the femoral and tibial footprint and the blood and the supply, blood supply and innervations. So some of the controversies in the ACL anatomy are the number of existence of bundles, the footprint shape, the footprint location, and the knot shape. This is a quote for Dr. Freddy Fu. Uh, he said that anatomical ACL reconstruction can be defined as the functional restoration of the ACL to its native dimension, collagen orientation, and insertion sites. So, uh, in 2010 and in 2015, two editorials from the KSSTA journal was published about the anatomical difference in the ACL anatomy. One from Dr. Freddy Fu and another from Dr. Rainer Siebel. But since many, many years ago, Weber and Weber described the anterior cruciate ligament and the anatomical variations in it morphology. So uh, they say, then, too many years ago, that the anatomy in the, fem the femoral insertion of the ACL has a flat sh morphology shape. So the principal main topic about this was in 2015, because these two articles was published. One by Robert Smigielski and another by Rainer Siebel. One uh, in the upper side um, about the femoral insertion morphology. They conclude that the femoral insertion site is flat and they propose the ribbon, uh, ribbon morphology of the ACL. And in the TBL site, the group by Ribbon, Rainer Siebel, established that the morphology of the TBL footprint of the ACL is like a C-shaped morphology. So uh, the problem with these two studies are that they were made in older population. The cadaver that they use was 78 and 54 years old. So uh, they, these studies can be applied to a general population because the ACL reconstruction is principally made in young patients. So uh, these are some images of the articles by Rainer Smigielski and Siebel. You can see that the ACL femoral footprint is flat and is like a ribbon in appearance. But in the clinical practice, in the majority of the case, we know and we see that in our arthroscopies, the ACL femoral insertion site is more like oval. So the problem with these studies are this. The main age of the specimens in the study by Siebel is 78 years, and the study of Emisgeski was 67 years. So, uh, they say in the discussion section that for an investigation in young cadavers may be wise to reconfirm the ACL flat anatomy in the population between 20 and 30 years old. So, since many, uh, since many years ago, we know the morphological change that occur in the ACL morphology with between time. You can see in the image how the morphology of the ACL changes with aging like in 20, 40, 60, and 80 years. So this is known already. And there are another phenomena that occur in the ACL insertion site. This fat, uh, fatty chains and fatty infiltration of fat tissue between the bundles of the ACL. So uh, we published two articles about this in 2021 and 2022 
both in Casta Journal. The first of our studies is about the tibial insertion morphology. And we conclude that the, uh, well, okay, we use cadavers from a young population and compare it to cadavers from an older population. So we found that in cadavers uh, under 50 years old, the prevalence of the morphology in the, in the tibial insertion site was oval or elliptical in the majority of the case. And the morphology of the tibial insertion site in the population or in the cadavers uh, about 50 years old, we found the C-shaped morphology that Robert Siebel mentioned in, in that studies. So uh, there are, this is an image of, of my article about this. E about the specific characteristics, we include cadavers. Uh, males and females. The mean age of the specimens in the, in the male age group was 72 years old. Uh, 30 years for the group of males under 50 years old. In the case of the females, 70 years for the group of uh, over uh, 50 years old and 27 years for the group of females under 50 years old. We used three observers. We obtained the kappa for the intra-observer agreement between the observers. And we conclude that there are significant variation in the tibial insertion morphology between cadavers of the younger and uh, older population. This another article was published by me in 2022. It's about the femoral insertion site morphology. The same methodology, we compare the uh, femoral insertion site between uh, um, younger and older uh, cadaveric specimens. So we found that in the males and females under 50 years old, the principal morphology was uh, semicircular. And in the males and females above 50 years old, the morphology was ribbon-like or flat, like in the studies by, by Robert Smigielski in 2015. So that is true. The, page, the, the cadavers above uh, in the older population has this morphology but the morphology in the group between 20 and 30 years old is in the, in the case of the femoral insertion site, uh, semicircular. And so you can see in the image how is the difference between an ACL femoral insertion site uh, from a young population and from an older population. As you know, the femoral footprint of the ACL has two insertion sites, the direct insertion and the indirect insertion of the femoral, of the anterior crucial ligament. So we see in our dissections that in the young specimens, the direct, direct insertion site of the ACL contacts the posterior, uh, the anterior border of the posterior articular cartilage. And in the older population, this direct insertion is very far from the posterior articular cartilage. So the indirect insertion site of the ACL is the result of the posterior lateral uh, bundle de degeneration of the ACL. We do some morphometrics in this study published in CASTA, and we conclude that. So about the conclusions, the ACL insertions change with aging. Uh, we propose the theory of the posterior degeneration, and it's, uh, we know that we need to find the clinical relevance of the current ACL anatomical studies. Thank you very much. This is my professor, Dr. Monjau from Barcelona. Thank you. Thank you.